since you became president, because BAC gave a, an honorary degree to Billy Graham. Uh, was that before or after? Do you know Billy Graham? Can you tell us anything about Billy Graham? That's a nice short answer, which I'm sure you're happy for. Um, I, I did not know Billy Graham. That happened before my time, but it, it does say something about the monks. Um, Belmont Abbey College, if you want to know what, what's the essence there, it is welcoming each person as Christ. It's in persona Christi. It's seeing Jesus Christ in each person, no matter what faith, what background. We say, come on, and we love you. Um, at the same time, and it's sometimes confusing people because they'll say, how can you... How can you have, like, say, for example, so many adult degree students who are not Catholic? Because, again, remember where we are. We're in the middle of the Bible Belt. You talk about mission territory. You know, there was less than half of 1% Catholics if you go back maybe 20 years ago in the Charlotte area. So it's a remarkable story of providence. So people sometimes can't put that together. Like, how could we be so Catholic and yet have many people that aren't Catholic? Well, I'd say to you that the Catholic faith is so appealing to so many people because when you welcome them and you live this out, they want to be part of it, you know, even though they say, well, I'm not Catholic, but I, I, everything you're doing I seem to love, and you seem to love me, you know, so they, they come in, and uh, sometimes, too, conversions happen. I've been a witness to that since I've been there, you know, some people, and sometimes it's like St. Monica thing, you know, people will be there for 18 years, and then they'll have a conversion. I'm thinking, now, why could we have just got that done in the first year, you know, why did that take 18 years, but that's sometimes how it works. So the, the Abbey is just a remarkable story of providence in its own right, how it even came to be there. What is the enrollment, please, doctor? Total enrollment, including our adult degree program, is just about 1,700 students. Um, but the adult degree program is pretty large, so I'd say we're, we're probably closer to maybe 900 traditional students, you know, somewhere. 80% of the traditional students live on campus. Yes? Besides the normal uh, <coughs> liberal arts curriculum, are students required to take any courses in philosophy or theology that are Catholic, that are, you know, Straight on Catholic. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, we just we made a recent increase uh, or improvement from my perspective in our core curriculum in the last I guess three years now or four years. Our core is outstanding. Um, there's two semesters of rhetoric, logic, writing, grammar. Um, two semesters of Western civilization. Two uh, semester of uh, Constitution, U.S. Constitution. Um, obviously, there's three courses of philosophy, the, uh, theology. Um, to in political philosophy, uh, you know, so it's it's a tight core. Like it's not like the Chinese menu thing, you know, where you kind of just choose this and that. It's it's really one of um, it makes sense how it's put together. And then the, the beauty of it is you can have that on top of then actually majoring in something in a particular field. And by the way, our sciences are really strong. We have ninety percent plus acceptance rate to medical school, hundred to med and pharmacy. That they really do an extraordinary job. Our honors institute is great. Yes, sir. Yeah, there's 225 Catholic colleges in the country. Only about 30 are allowed to sign on to explore the ecclesia. Mm -hmm. Why? The question is, why haven't more places, more, I guess, uh forthrightly taken on ex cordia ecclesiae. For those that don't know that, that was the apostolic constitution written by John Paul II that basically laid out what does it mean for a Catholic college or university. For anybody who's ever read it, I don't see what problem you could possibly have with it because it welcomes everybody. There's nothing in there that's excluding people or anything else, but it clearly lays out what it does mean if you say you're a Catholic college or university. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, it's it's hubris or it's pride or it's just uh, not wanting to. I mean, that's what Land Lakes was. For those, I won't get get into it tonight. Um, Land Lakes, though, was a time where basically college presidents, Catholic college presidents, got together and said, um, "We we want to be in control, not the church, and basically we're going to do what we want to do." Uh, and I think that has carried over. So. Obviously, Ex Cordier is going back into the direction, saying that there actually is, you know, some authority that is beyond us, um, and they sometimes don't want to go along with that. It's hubris and pride. I mean, you see it in higher education in general. I mean, there's a, there's a certain hubris and pride there that, you know, everybody knows best. Um, but there are some great places, uh, as you mentioned, uh, that are, are loyal to the church, that live it out. And by the way, aren't some crazy extremist or something. I mean, it's very balanced. Bell and Abbey College is a very balanced place. It's not some, you know, strange land. You yeah. know? It's, it's, it's good people doing good things, and it's again, it's the balance of body, mind, and spirit. So, I'm sure you're ready at this point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one more. Yeah, I would like to say one thing about Bell and Abbey College. Uh, on August 19, 1970, I walked into the best church of Belmont Abbey Cathedral. It changed my entire life. 
my entire life is centered around Benedictinism. I left Elman Abbey. I spent 14 years at Orton Prison. Uh, I worked at St. Elizabeth's Hospital, uh, teaching the criminally insane. All of this was driven by the inspiration I derived from the monks of Belmont Abbey. People like Drew Fleary, Walter Coggan, yeah. Matthew McSorley. Is my, the, oh, the best and he just passed I, away recently. I, I, yeah. I kept in touch with Father Matthew his entire life, my entire life. He changed well, everything. I think I can capture what you feel in one quote from Abbot Leo Hade, who was the first, first abbot and first bishop of all of North Carolina, because at the time there was no diocese anywhere in North Carolina. Um, this was the quote. He said he was blessing the cornerstone of the, of the stove, the administration building, the main administration building, which, by the way, is connected to the monastery. So somebody who doesn't think we're, we should have an exemption from the HHS mandate, I don't know. Um, anyway, in blessing that stone, he said, the work and prayers here shall spread God's blessing over this beautiful country in the years to come, when perhaps few of you who are listening to me now shall be among the living. The work and prayers here, what does he mean? It's the aura labora. I mean, that is the motto of the Benedictines. It's the prayer and work. And what is the prayer and work? It's the students. He had this beautiful vision of the fruit of those works and prayers were the students, and they would flow out over this country, this beautiful country in the years to come. They would be God's blessing being spread over this beautiful country in the years to come. And I love his prophetic nature, which is, he said, when perhaps few of you who are listening to me now shall be among the living. He knew that we'd all be gone, and I'm telling you right now, I'm saying it, we're all going to be gone someday, and that's going to keep happening. God's grace and beauty will be spread over this country because of the work that's being there, done there and the grace of God that's at the center of it. And Jesus Christ is at the center of that college. That, that is why we exist and that's why we're there. So, Barry, yeah. Again, one, one real quick thing. Uh, Jack actually gave me Bill's book back in October and I had never heard Bill speak and he said, I'm thinking of having this guy speak and by accident, Jack left me the book and I read the book and immediately I was on a plane trip to the West Coast, and I read it uh, before I got back. And right away I started getting it from my nieces and nephews, I have 34 of those. And to me, uh, in the 55 years I've been here on this earth, I've read a lot, read a lot of Focus on the Family and good authors, etc. This, if you're going to read one book or get it to your young people, is the book. And I told my nieces and nephews and siblings to buy the book, and if they didn't like it, I would buy it back. <laughs> and that's how confident I am. You will. And that letter he read, I mean, the whole book is like that. So if you really care about your nieces and nephews, your kids, get them the book, pay them to read the book, or whatever you have to do. <laughs> that is an absolutely uh, fantastic book. Thank you. Thank you.